Hi friends. Today I thought I would share with you what I have observed with hot and cold press paper. I, I get asked a lot about this and I feel like it, it's really just a matter of preference. Some people prefer the hot press over the cold press. I'll tell you it's really a the difference in them too is just in the process of making them. So a hot press paper is where they're running the paper, the pulp, through hot rollers or a hot flat iron. And it's, to me, I liken it to when you press your clothes. So it's very smooth because it's hot. They're using hot irons. So hot, hot rollers actually. So that hot press paper, it's very compressed. It has a smooth surface. Therefore the paint, what I have found, takes a little bit longer to kind of seep into this pressed paper and it tends to sit on top a bit longer, which can be good because you can lift for a little bit longer. Uh, you can play with the paint a little bit longer because it sits on top. Cold press is where they use cold rollers and it doesn't flatten out all the fibers as much. So it's not as smoothed uh, as opposed to hot press paper that cold press, the rolls aren't heated. And they also, what I learned, the rolls are applying a little bit less pressure to the paper so that that lighter pressure, the lack of the heat, allows the paper to keep its kind of toothy, textury, rougher finish, which I love. I, I found in all the classes I've taken over the decades and all the years I've painted, I feel like cold press is uh, much more popular. And for me, it definitely um, feels a little bit more durable. The texture I love, it absorbs the paint a little bit more easier. And to me, I feel like the cold press offers a little bit more softness in my paintings. Um, the rough, pa the rough uh, paper is also another option. I didn't set up a piece here because it's very similar to the cold press except for it's even a little bit rougher so it's gonna give a little bit maybe even more of a dramatic watercolor texture uh you can also see a lot of the brush strokes i feel on the cold press a little bit more uh the paint i have noticed doesn't quite bleed as much on the hot press. It can. I felt it bleeds a little bit less. You you have a cleaner edge. Uh, it's painting on the hot press, smoother, uh, cleaner edges, easier to get detail, a little bit more predictable. Uh, some people may feel it's a little bit more manageable to control that spreading. One of the things I love about cold press is how it, it does kind of spread and blend. I particularly like that. Uh, people have said that the colors are a little bit more vivid on hot press. Uh, maybe uh, I haven't particularly noticed that. So, with with all of this being said, I, I think it's, you know, really up to, it's just a preference thing. Practice with both of them. See what you like. For me, it's the cold press. I like the bumpy surface. I like the texture. 
Uh, I like the softness of it. That's that's kind of just me. I use mostly wet and wet techniques, and the cold press I have found works much better than with the cold press than the hot press. You have a lot of different decisions when you first start painting uh, with watercolors, and I feel like paper you know, shouldn't be one of the big ones that you have to kind of stress over. And I just always went to the cold press because that's what I was given in college, in high school. And now decades later, I've just stuck with the cold press. Give them a try. See what you like better. Uh, I feel again like the cold press for me is my choice. It's more organic. It's more washy. It's softer. A lot of people do really like the hot press. So just practice and see what you like best. Today I'm going to do a couple different little painting techniques to give you the choice and you can kind of see. I'm hoping you can see it on here. It, it might be a, a little bit challenging to pick it up with the camera. I will try and hold it up so you can get a little bit better idea of what it looks like. I will do a couple washes on both. I will also do some petals and, and leaves maybe so you can see how the blend is and hopefully see that aesthetic appeal of the texture of the cold cold press paper. I will also do some lifting for you on each one so you can see how it lifts. The hot press again is going to lift much easier than the cold press because the cold press being more textured and fibrous, it's going to absorb your paint rather quickly. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm using my number eight Princeton brush. That is my go-to. And today I'm going to paint with this ultramarine blue and maybe some red. I want you to be able to see the paint on the paper. So let's start with the cold press. And I'm just going to do a wash here. Now, Remember, I'm getting a lot of questions around feeling like your, your petals are just a blob. I am thinking that is because you may be using too much water when you're laying down your layer of paint. If you see here, the perfect layer of paint, and I have this in my tutorial for washes. If you haven't seen that, take a look because I think it's really important to do these warm-up exercises constantly until you get used to how much water to put down. If you can see this, this is the perfect amount. Now, there may be times and techniques that you want more water. For the most part, this is how I paint. It's just got a shine and a sheen. That's what I look for. Now, if you notice on the cold press, there is this texture around the edges. Now, I love that. It also can be a little uh, textury, and the paint shows through as it sits in the little toothy pockets. Now I'm going to do a example of a wash here, and this is a graduated wash. What I did is I laid down one layer of paint. I kept going into my water, rinsing my brush, dabbing it a bit, and going in with water and pulling that paint down to get this beautiful light, lighter and lighter and lighter technique. So let's work on the hot press now. I'm going in with that same amount of ultramarine blue. Now already I can feel a huge difference here. It's very smooth. My edges are crisp. Here they have a bit of a toothy texture to the edges. 
because those pieces of fiber that are sticking up and not completely flat are grabbing edges of my brush. Now I'm going to pull this paint down. I keep wetting my brush like so, okay? So this is that graduation. And to be honest, ultramarine is a little bit grainy anyway, so you can see some of the little graininess in here. But notice the edges are a difference. Now, this is a subtle difference. This may not make any difference to you. I just want to point it out so you can see it. The edges on here tend to have a lot more bumpiness, here, it's very clear, distinct brush lines. Because of that, you're going to feel like you have a little bit more detail. You can create a little bit more detail because when you're creating lines on here, see what happens? You're getting, your brush is not flowing across the paper exactly the same. So you're always going to get this little bit of texture here in the edges. Where on the hot press, because it's so, so smooth, there's nothing to grab your brush. And therefore your lines are very hard edged. Now, if you've watched my tutorials, I'm not a hard edged person. I like, I'm always softening my edges. So here are the lines and you may not be able to see these, but this one is very much clear and clean on the edges. This one is gonna have a little bit more of this toothiness on the edges. Not always, you can achieve this, for the most part, that's what I have found working with these papers. Now, the next thing I wanted to do is if I go in to this first cold press, I can't really lift, okay? If I go in here because of the paper not drying as quickly as here, I can lift very easily it's still even lifting some of this. Now, let's just practice here. Let's do this. This is another way of lifting. Let's see. If I was to wet this, and I haven't done this exact experiment. Let's just see. I applied just clear water, and I'm going to go in now and lift. Okay, so that does a pretty good job. Now let's try and lift on this one and see what happens. Okay, now let me lift. Look at how much easier it lifts. That is what I have noticed. This hot press paper is easier to lift because this is like almost painting on cotton fibers and they all absorb more of the paint, therefore it's harder to lift. This is much easier to lift paint up on. You, and you have a lot longer because the, wa the paint on hot press is sitting on top of the water a lot longer. So that, that was a couple things I really noticed. I will tell you too, there's, <sighs> What I have learned over the years is watercolor paper tends to come in three materials. You have your wood pulp, you have your cellulose fibers, you have your cotton. Now, something like Arches is 100% cotton, which is a great, great paper. And some of the more student grade, the more inexpensive papers are gonna have a little bit more cellulose in them they're mixing which is uh, going to have a little bit lower quality, okay? I have also noticed paper with more cellulose 
it tends to vary a little bit in quality, okay? But it is more affordable. So when I have played with different student grade papers, sometimes I get a paper that is really awesome and great, which I feel is that Artisto that I recommend. For an inexpensive paper, love it. I think it's awesome. And you can also get others that say 140 pound, cold press, hot press, and I feel like the student grade doesn't work quite as well and handle it, it warps and things like that. So let's, I, what I really want you to see is how the paint blends on both of these. So we've already made note that the lines when you paint on hot press are gonna be much more crisp and clean versus the lines and edges on cold press. And lifting is a lot easier on hot press because the water, the paint is sitting on top of the paper for longer. Cold press tends to soak it up much quicker. And I think that was the majority for right now. And the hot press, uh, like I said, the, the paint sits on top for a lot longer. So you have a longer amount of time to play with it and mix and do some things like that. Now, let's go in and create a leaf. So let me grab some of my, for the most part, I tend to always use sap and olive green. That's just my go-to colors. Let's go in and I, I like to paint with this tea consistency. So let's go in and create a leaf here. So if you've watched mine, I'm gonna use kind of a C stroke. So I'm using the tip of my brush, tip, press down, and there we go. Now I'm gonna go in right away with some yellow. And let's see how this blends, point, press. Okay. So if you can see that it really mixes, it mixes, it starts blending. Uh, you're getting these variations of green and yellow mixing together. Uh, I, I really like that. That's how I paint predominantly. I like that blend. Now let's go in on the hot press and let me create a line here. Point press down, widen out the barrel. Okay. So my paint, what I'm noticing right away is sitting and I feel like pulling a little bit more. That may just be me. You buy these papers and play with them yourself. Now I'm going to go in with the yellow and let's do the same thing and see how it blends. So I'm picking up my CAD yellow and let's go in and just add that next to it. Point, press, like that. So do you notice right away, You the lines are very distinct. The green isn't blending into the yellow. The yellow isn't really blending into the green. Now, could I try and blend those because the, the paint stays uh, wet longer? Absolutely, let's see. So I could run over these and try to mix them on top of the paper for sure. Something like that. Although for me, I really like just placing my paint there and letting it kind of mix on its own. Hopefully you saw how that worked here when I put it down. It, it started blending and bleeding into each other and mixing very soft edge where the green and yellow came together. Here there was definitely, there still is a line. For me, just my preference, I don't like lines necessarily, okay? I am really an appreciator of softer edges. Let's do, 
Let me see. One second here. Let's do a little pink uh, flower petal and see what happens here. Okay, so here's a petal point. Press, and now let's do the other side. Point, press, okay. There we go. So there's our flower petal. Now working wet and wet, I love to go in here and add in, let's go in and add in some of our cad yellow. That's typically what I use in the Quin Magenta. So here we go. Now I'm getting this beautiful blending of the paints. They're, they're mixing together, they're soft. All right, and let me go in the tip of the petal here, and I'm just gonna add in a tiny bit of purple. Okay, so there it goes, blending. All right, now let's do the same thing and see what happens with the hot pressed paper. So I'm going to grab some of my magenta, point, press, let me get just a tiny bit more water, point, press, point, press, like this, okay, there we go, okay. Now let's go in with that same orange. I'm sorry, cad yellow I ended up using. Oops, one second. Let me get a good little amount of that yellow and go into the edges. There we go. Okay, if you notice, the yellow is not bleeding and blending like it did on the cold press. It's kind of staying right where I put it. Let's try and go in and add some purple in here like I did and see what happens. Okay, so this is why it's so much better for detail because you can put these lines down and they're not just right away blending and bleeding together like they do on the cold press. They pretty much stay here. So you get these more distinct lines, these clearer lines, these cleaner lines. And if you like that type of look, hot press papers for you. Now, what I would wanna do here, this is just kind of intuitively what I want to do is go in with a damp brush and start trying to feather this out because again I don't like hard edges I love the bleed that that to me is where it's at um let let's try this let's do another wash okay and here we go. Okay, this is purple. Let me add some water to that. This is violet purple, by the way. Winter Newton, of course. And now let's go here and do a violet purple. So right away, it's a much cleaner line. Okay. Now I'm going to go in here. Notice this is a sheen, no puddles, no pulling. And let's add in some red. And see what it does. Okay, you ready? So this is the cold press. Okay. So I'm going in here. 
I'm adding in these little dots. I hope you can see this. Let's try a lighter blue. See what we get here. Okay, and I'll hold these up to the camera so you can see them as well. And then let's go in here and add in this blue, okay? See what it does. So if you notice, right away I notice, where I'm dotting on that paint, it's not moving. It's, it's not blending, it's not spreading. That's not a bad thing. It just is what it does on hot pressed paper. Exactly where I put those dabs is exactly where it's staying. Now notice on this cold pressed paper, it all blended together. It all became very fuzzy and soft. You don't have these very distinct lines, okay? So that is really, to me, one of the biggest qualities, aside from it, you can lift easier if you do a lot of lifting, maybe for landscapes and clouds and things like that. I've taught you to create white space to lift. That's uh, kind of a uh, plus there. White space is hard to get our mind, kind of our mind to wrap our mind around. If you do want to create white space in the beginning, maybe use tissue just to go in and kind of create that instead of trying to paint and leave uh, white space on your page. So I hope this tutorial was kind of fun. Buy yourself some hot press, some cold press if you really want to play. Buy yourself uh, the rough paper. I do have it because I do love painting on it. I'm gonna show you one sec. So the hot press is this bright pink. Here's rough. I, I love the rough because it's even just a little rougher than the cold. And just experiment. Now, if you look, this is still wet. This one is pretty much almost dry. This one, still wet. Now, for some of you that like to keep playing with your watercolors, you may appreciate that and want that. If you are a detailed person, you're most likely going to like the hot press and how it reacts with paint. For me, liking that soft and the bleeding effect and just, I love the, the texture of it. To me, that is why I use watercolors. I like the cold press. With all this being said, um, you know, just, just play. Just play and see what you like more. If you like the wet into wet techniques, the softer, the blurrier, the less detail, you're gonna probably like the cold press. If you like more detail, more crisp, more clean, you're going to most likely uh, be drawn to the hot press. There you go. I hope you found some value in this. I would really just, again, encourage you to buy a couple sheets of some of these and play and see what you like best. Okay, have fun, everybody. And thank you so much again for being here. I really appreciate you all. I've been here on YouTube now, I believe, seven and a half weeks and learning so much and just loving what you guys are asking me about and bringing to me and really enjoying all of this. All right, everybody, I will talk to you soon, and I hope uh, you go ahead and get out there and play with some of these. All right, friends, happy painting.